Hello, everybody. This is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar presentation. I hope you're having a good weekend and enjoying your Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon, depending on where you're located. We are continuing with our ongoing pres presentations for the 2021 webinar series. You could see recordings of past presentations and schedules of upcoming presentations on our website, blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2021. As usual, we'll be sending the CE credit for attending this webinar presentation to your email account that should arrive within around one week's time. Today, we have the privilege of hearing from Dr. Michael Scherer. Dr. Scherer is an industry innovator and enthusiast in the fields of dental implants, dentures, and digital technology, and has been involved in the development and utilization of new dental technologies. He's a clinical professor at Loma Linda University, a clinical instructor at the University of Nevada, and is a board certified prosthodontist. Dr. Sharon maintains four educational YouTube channels. He lectures and, and educates internationally and has educated thousands of dentists. Today, he'll be speaking on the topic of everyday restorative dentistry with the Blue Sky Plan software. Dr. Sharon. Michael, thank you for inviting me and uh, thank you everybody for joining us here on this amazing Sunday morning. And it's an honor and privilege to be able to go ahead and come across today here with this webinar presentation. Um, and it's also a privilege to be able to be associated indirectly with you and Blue Sky Bio. Uh, not only you know all the kind words that she mentioned about me being an innovator, but Blue Sky Bio for really setting the digital trend in implant dentistry for easily uh, you know years and years and years uh, as a digital leader. Kudos and um, congratulations to the entire Blue Sky Bio team. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm going to go ahead then and share my screen. Oh, okay. There we go. Turn this down, get my PowerPoint going. Sorry, everybody hang tight. And there we go. And then everybody should see my screen. Michael, we good? Yep. Good to go. Awesome. All right, everybody. So I um, wanted to go ahead and welcome you all to today's program and presentation. Uh, the topic and title that's been given to me, especially from Michael and the team at Blue Sky Bio and, and a lot of my students as well is, is how do I go ahead and I use Blue Sky Bio plan software for kind of everyday digital restorative dentistry? whether it's, you know, maybe removable or crown and bridge. Uh, as many of you know, I'm, I'm really into doing digital design. I'm a little bit of a computer nerd, as many of you know. Uh, but the reality is, is, is what an exciting time it is to be in clinical practice and clinical dentistry, because we have this ongoing trend occurring of this fusion between clinical practice as well as our laboratory practice. And in all reality, dentistry, we're such a hands-on type of profession and that's a big reason why many of us are drawn to it, because we have the ability to do some very creative things. And the Blue Sky Bio Plan software allows us to do some really incredible things. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Thank you again, Michael, for the kind introduction. I'm in full-time clinical practice in Northern California, a small town about two hours east of the San Francisco Bay Area. And we draw from a, a kind of a wide swath of people uh, and patients uh, from miles away. And, and I routinely have patients traveling to my office from somewhere between you know, 30 minutes to upwards of six, seven hours, uh, people that are looking for creative digital solutions, especially when it comes to restorative dentistry. And the reality is, is, is it's a routine in my practice to be able to go ahead and do this creative digital restorative dentistry uh, for my patients. I'm also serving as the chief clinical advisor, implants and prosthetics for Zest Dental Solutions. I have the honor and privilege to be able to associate it uh, and be the, the chief clinical advisor for the entire company. Uh, so uh, the locator products and things of that nature. I'm also an assistant clinical professor at uh, Loma Linda. And here's my website, michaelshearerdmd.com. And certainly as our program goes across here today, you know, without a doubt, we, we thank Blue Sky Bio for hosting these incredible free webinar series for doctors from all around the world. And if you have a question that comes up during today's program, just go ahead and pop it into the question and answer the Q&A box here on your Zoom setting. I'm monitoring the Q&A box and I'll go ahead and address questions here as we go. You know, if we get to the end of today's program and presentation and you still have some questions that were not really addressed, um, you can certainly reach out to me my website, michaelshearerdmd.com. 
I've got my publications on there as well. If you want to read some stuff that I published before in traditional journals, and then also my YouTube channels. I have an entire YouTube channel specifically dedicated to digital dentistry. Also, make sure you check out our website and our Facebook uh, channel at Learn Dentistry and www.learndentistry.com. And we have a lot of engaging content, and different clinical cases and digital cases that I post on a regular basis at Learn Dentistry. Additionally, we host a variety of online CE educational courses. If any doctor would like a more formal course uh, on digital dentistry, 3D printing, I go into Blue Sky Bio Plan software, both for surgical guides, as well as restorative dentistry. In my digital courses, I encourage you to go ahead and check them out at www.learndentistry.com. We do have a brand new course also for all on X. So literally everything that you could ever imagine for both analog and digital all on for all on X treatment, including clinical documentation and videos. So the real question that we have here today, tuning into today's program is, you know, we've already kind of established the fact that digital dentistry is really here to stay. Why are we still thinking, oh, okay, how do we approach digital dentistry? How do we approach the step-by-steps and implementation of digital dentistry in our everyday clinical practice? You know, you might be sitting back and saying, well, you know, that Shearer guy, you know, he's kind of a computer nerd and maybe he could go work for Apple or Google and do all that. And the reality is, this is that, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit of a nerd, but the reality is, this is, I just literally had a, a, a clinician the other day reach out to me and tell me how much digital dentistry has impacted his practice. And he says in his 40 years of clinical practice, he's never been so excited about dentistry. I said, 40 years, how old are you? Says, says, Mike, I'm 78 years old. (laughs) And I said, and you're getting into scanning digital design and 3d printing. He goes, why not? Uh, The reality is this is, I had to ask myself for this program and presentation you know, we know all the whys of why we go into digital dentistry, what, what makes us tick. But the reality is, is there's so many people that just have this digital unknown. What holds us back from implementing intraoral scanning, desktop scanning, 3D design, printing, milling? And it's all about the kind of the digital unknown or the digital frontier. So what happens is, is is that it can be a lot of anxiety for us as clinicians to say, well, you know, Shearer, Corey, Baron, Rick, they've got the stuff figured out where they can look at a 3D printer and it just connects, or you can go ahead and print something. You can take a tie base in your hand and say to yourself, you know what, I can take this straight out of the printer and just go and it will fit and the occlusion will be pretty close and the contacts will be pretty close. The reality is, is that, is this a simple procedure? Uh, Yeah, it actually kind of is. When you really think about how 3D printing and digital design come together, it's not that complicated. But is it easy? The reality is is, is that nothing is easy the first time that you do it, whether it's uh, doing your first crown prep or uh, the first time that you get on a bicycle, the first time that you do rock climbing, the first time that you file your taxes. You know, everything the first time that you do something is difficult. And the, the key is, this is that, is it simple where I can go ahead and pick up, you know, like my phone and just start kind of doing one of these things and going back and forth? Yeah. Our goal in digital dentistry is, this is that we want to approach things intelligently. But then a big part of that also is this understanding that digital dentistry can be also be somewhat expensive. So are there things that we can do in our clinical practices that we can keep the barrier to entry a little bit lower? Not everybody wants to shell out $10,000 on one of these types of printers that I just showed with the tie base. Maybe we want to go ahead and start with something a little bit cheaper, like a three, $400 3D printer. You know, when you're thinking about digital dentistry in your practice, there's a big kind of delta in terms of some companies charging big bucks versus other companies charging very inexpensive. And I'm inspired by people like Rick Ferguson and Renal Gonzalez, who are the pioneers when it came to very affordable, knock them down, cheap you know, 3D printers, developing workflows that you can take a Sonic Mini or a Sonic 4K, you know, less than $400, $300. Rick just posted one the other day. It was like with a coupon, it's like 260. I don't know what it was, Uh, but it's like, you know, it's throwaway money. I mean, you spend more on that on a fancy dinner, uh, you know, on on your anniversary or whatever. So what happens is, is this technology, the price of entry is coming down. But what about the digital software side of things to be able to design and then reliably 3D print so that way you can 3D print a base and then the denture teeth pop right in. 
You know, we're still at the kind of the frontier of digital dentistry. We're at the frontier of how things work from a perspective where we're thinking about, okay, how do we genuinely get involved with digital dentistry? And we have to ask ourselves, what do we want to make? The key to get started with digital dentistry is, is, is that we're makers. We're people that want to go ahead and start to create something. And we're wanting to creating a tooth. We're wanting to creating a restoration, a surgical guide, something that is going to impact the patient's quality of life, whether they know it or not. And, you know, the patient doesn't necessarily know. It's like, well, you made my tooth with a digital method versus an analog method. They don't really kind of care that much. But if you make a big deal out of the digital process, then yeah, people do care. I mean, Digital d dentistry is a lot of times just kind of creating the value with you as a clinician and you as a laboratory. And I live and breathe this every single day. So I show my scanners, I show some of these printers and their teeth 3D printed and in every single patient, whether they're younger or in their 80s and 90s are genuinely blown away by what you can do in dentistry and medicine. And I've got a lot of uh, my family members that are actually in the medical field and they're like, wait, you're actually using 3D printers on a day-to-day -day basis. And they're like, wow, that is so cool. I said, are you doing anything fun with the 3D printer other than dentistry? I'm like, ah, you know, yeah, I'm printing little brackets in the office and x-ray mounts and a comb beam scanner clip for the, for the teeth. So the patient bites into a fork. I don't know. I printed 3D pendants for my lights in my office. And it's all about creating engagement with our, our patients. But the goals of for us to get started with everyday restorative dentistry is finding out what you want to do. And whether it's kind of like producing crowns or dentures, surgical guides, occlusal guards, models, you know, 3D printing is really perfect for being able to produce models, being able to produce surgical guides, prototyping restorations, dentures, occlusal guards. And, you know, especially when you're starting to look like at the lowest hanging fruit of a clinical practice and how 3D printing can dramatically impact that. The number one way, in my personal opinion, is just going to be occlusal guards. You know, it's a very straightforward thing, extremely predictable and benign. If it doesn't fit, you know, it's like you just throw it away. And then the next step would be a surgical guide. And it's a just as easy to go ahead and create, especially a blue sky bio software, but you know, it's obviously surgery. There's a little bit more, you know, X factor and a little bit more potential for error as opposed to just an occlusal guard. But a lot of restorative dentists, it's like, okay, I buy a cheap little 3d printer. Maybe I design the, the guard and whatever software it may be, uh, blue sky bio, exocad three shape, or even outsourcing the design you know, for 10 bucks uh, and 15 bucks total for materials and everything, I could make a surgical guide. And it's not necessarily just about cost savings here, everybody. It's also about being able to generate these things very quickly. So if I look at my schedule for next week and say, oh my goodness, I've got a, uh, a surgical guide that I got a, you know, a surgery for Monday, I forgot to print the surgical guide. <laughs> I mean, just this week in my practice, I get to, I looked at my schedule and I look at it the day before. I'm like, oh, all right, all right. My mind is already shut off. I'm ready to think about home and getting on the couch and walking the dog, whatever. And um, then I get there that next morning, I'm like, oh no, I forgot to do a custom tray. <laughs> so, or whatever, a uh, cool guard. I'm like, no, instead of rescheduling the patient, it's like, I got this. So it's impacted the restorative practice in so many ways because you can not only generate things with 3D printing, but then once you feel comfortable with sort of some of the digital workflows, then it's time to invest in milling. And milling is not going away anytime soon. And I've always been known as kind of like a 3D printing guy. And I was a super early pioneer when it came to super desktop level 3D printers. You know, one of the earliest doctors, you know, to use the Formlabs printer for dentistry. And what happens is, is if you think about it, am I really doing crowns, you know, with my 3D printer? Yeah, I'm doing some but they're more or less long-term prototypes. I mean, you know, anybody that says, oh yeah, this is going to be a permanent tooth forever. I mean, we're just not there yet. I mean, the materials are getting there, but it's, it's going to be a little while longer. Um, and we were supposed to, as of two months ago, be in Germany, looking at the IDS show, the International Dental Show in Germany. And the last time I went was 2019. And there was, you know, I was expecting maybe a 3D printer, one or two that could do zirconia. And there was three, possibly four printers to be able to 3D print zirconium. 
So this year, uh, which is now in October, so if anybody wants to go to Germany and wants to, to risk it, I'll be there. So you know, the reality is, is we can go COVID share a glass of beer outside together. But what happens is, is, is that it's still until we really know if zirconia additive manufacturing can will really impact our everyday lives, milling is here to stay. And milling is ideal for crowns, dentures, occlusal guards, but then also polymers and metals. So uh, a big part of my practice for using a mill is going to be zirconia restorations. And it's also important too, when we're thinking about re digital restorative dentistry and how we best implement best practices, that is, you know, you have to think about how you're going to be approaching your, your everyday workflow, whether it's you as the doctor and clinician driving the ship and doing everything, or also integrating teams. And they're both good. There's nothing wrong with saying I'm the doctor, I'm also doing all the digital and I don't want to have my, my team members touch the 3D printer. Perfectly fine. I'm the big kind of person where I like, I want to have auxiliaries. I want to be able to have people that are involved with my everyday workflows because there's just one of me and I'm kind of busy when it comes to not only patients, but then also doing the laboratory side of the practice. So a big part of what I did in my practice was bring in a laboratory technician. So this is Chris here, and he's a 40 year bench uh, CDT in removable has no idea how to do zirconia, doesn't know anything about digital dentistry, uh, but he knows dentistry and he knows teeth and he knows how to set occlusion really well. And so all I do is, is I just kind of pass off right at the digital design. Once the digital design is done, then he just takes over and you'd be amazed how good a removable technician can do porcelain, everybody. So, you know, especially with monolithic zirconia. And whether you're ready in your practice to bring in a technician or not, the vast majority of clinicians are not going to have a technician, but you'll have a dental assistant that you can go ahead and train to be your technician. It's really tough to find a dental technician like a CDT or MDT in your practice really hard, but that opportunity is out there. The most important thing though is, is, is that whether you're working together as a team, you got to have fun. So, I mean, this is kind of my idea of fun, you know, sitting there and opening up a computer on the day after Black Friday and Thanksgiving and installing a new, a new hard drive on my design computer. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait for that Amazon box to come in. So call me a weirdo. Uh, but then also, you know, I, I, I had the uh, wonderful opportunity of being able to share my clinical practice with my other half, Dr. Melissa Chotel, also known as the Aligner Bee. Um, and she has fun. She loves aligners. She's an orthodontist and just goes crazy uh, with Blue Sky Bio, with aligners, doing these in office. And she is just incredible. And we had the fun too. So this is, uh, to my knowledge, this is one of the first times I've seen it where, um, you know, we were both in the same lecture and webinar series. So as a, as a fun little plug, she actually gave a webinar presentation for Blue Sky Bio about a month, month and a half ago. So make sure you go check out her presentation. It was really great. The key for a clinician for digital restorative dentistry is you got to start smart. Think about what your pathway is going to be, whether it's a chair side solution where you're going to go ahead and grab an intraoral scanner, uh, a milling machine, and then a furnace. And it could be something that's already prepackaged, something like a dense by Serona Seric unit or an E4D, uh, you know, uh, emerald style workflow, you know, with the, with the plan mecha and plan mill, or you start to go outside of the the, the closed box, which is, you know, you want to be able to go ahead and sync your scanner, which might be a Medit, might be a Trios, might be a CareStream, might be an iTero, you know, with a uh, software like Blue Sky Bio uh, to go ahead and design crowns and restorations goes into a VHF or a Roland mill, and then you'll center it on whatever you got. So when we're starting and starting building a digital restorative practice, it's really important to understand that we need some sort of optical scanner. Gone are the days of where we're doing this quasi-analog and quasi-digital. I'm a firm believer that optical scanning is here to stay. You know, using a comb beam to scan a model is a workaround at best. And does it work? Yeah. You could design crowns if you, if you scan the model in with a comb beam scanner. It's not going to be very accurate, everybody, but you'll at least have the ability to make printed temporaries and occlusal guards with that approach. Dentures you could do as well, but... It's a little tricky. So it's time to just invest in a desktop scanner or an intraoral scanner. And when you're thinking about desktop scanners, you know, the Blue Sky Bio scanner is really, really an excellent scanner for the price point. And if you need to feel like you've got something a little bit more laboratory focused, the Three Shape E series scanners or the Medit scanners are really exceptional scanners as well. 
but they're also lower cost compared to the intraoral scanner, but they have lower flexibility, meaning that you can only scan models or physical impressions. Where the intraoral scanner, it has a higher upfront cost, but it has a tremendous flexibility. So what happens is, is you can use your intraoral scanner and scan impressions, scan models, scan patients. Um, so I actually do not own a desktop scanner and I Hate to say it, but I don't necessarily know if desktop scanners are going to be around, you know, for much longer, just because the power of intraoral scanning is just tremendous. That being said, desktop scanners will always be here for the laboratory, <clears throat> because you know, if you're a laboratory technician, you know, taking out an intraoral scanner and scanning a physical impression, it just doesn't work. So if I'm a laboratory technician and I work with physical impressions all day every day for my restorative doctors getting cases, you need a desktop scanner. And in those cases, you know, going something like the Blue Sky Bioscanner is a really nice scanner for uh, the, the price point. Now, when you're starting to think about scanners, the natural segue is, is what do I do with those scan files? Historically, the design software has been something like the Three Shape Dental System, Exo, ExoCAD, you know, dental, dental CAD software. But you know who's been really coming up with some very creative workflows recently, or even over the past few years, is Blue Sky Bio. And when you're thinking about kind of what happens. I own three shape ExoCAD full licenses for both. And I use them very often. And I also use blue sky bio software very often. So what happens is this is that hmm, if I'm going to say doctors, I get a lot of messages. Well, which one would you choose Mike? They're all great. But the reality is this is that a software package like three shape or ExoCAD can cost you just for the software alone, approximately $10,000 all in. And then you have yearly fees every single year of somewhere between 1500, maybe a thousand bucks up upwards of two to $3,000 every year, just to go ahead and use these softwares or get the updates or whatever the package may be. So the cost of entry of buying a, an intraoral scanner, which can run upwards of somewhere between about $20,000 all the way up to, you know, 40, 50, 60. Sure. You can get intraoral scanner for that 12 to 15 range as well. So maybe 10 to 12, all the way up to 50 to 60. Desktop scanner, $2,000, $2,500, all the way up to $20,000. Software, woo, man, you're talking 10,000 bucks for software versus free for Blue Sky Bio. And, you know, uh, for right now and for however long it lasts for as well, Blue Sky Bio doesn't charge export fees for crown designs. Wow. So it's like you get a free software, free crown design, free bridge designs. I mean, that's a kind of a fun way to start learning digital dentistry. And then, of course, once you learn it, you start producing. So manufacturing options, once you have the scan, then you've got the design, then you got to think about how you produce the actual object. So production is going to be something like this. You have a hobbyist level 3D printer, a production 3D printer, or production milling. The hobbyist level 3D printer is just a wonderful machine, something like the Anycubic Photon, the Frozen, even like a Formlabs printer could be in that, but no, it's more in the production category. But what happens is, is I would say printers that are in the sub $1,500 range. They tend to be the lower costs. However, it tends to be the lowest usability and the lowest flexibility. Now, I know a lot of you are going to argue, and, and I know like my, my friend and colleague Rick is going to be like, Mike, they're super flexible and super usable. That is true. These printers are really open. You can do anything with them, print anything with them, but you got to really put your mind to it. It's not like plug and play where an intraoral scanner, you just plug it in, you start scanning, it works, okay? Uh, Blue Sky Bio software, you open it up, start playing around, and it just works, okay? When it comes to these 3D printers at this price point, it's 200, 300 bucks for a 3D printer. Does that mean it comes with everything dental that you need in there? No, you gotta have to kind of figure out the settings a little bit and you'll troubleshoot things. Just go on to the, on the dental 3D printing group, you know, that Rick and uh, Renal and Kurt Valley run um, and you see awesome stuff. But then you also see a lot of these things of like calibration cubes and, you know, all these things. And like, I printed like two calibration cubes in my entire life. And like, that's the last thing I ever want to do is print a stupid calibration cube. I think it's a waste of time. And I just, I like a printer that I just plug in and it's calibrated and it's ready to go because I just don't have time for that. You know, and I've, I've printed these things only when there's trouble, like when the printer is just not working correctly. So when you're thinking about production 3D printing, 
this is kind of where I spend a lot of my time because I have a very busy production laboratory with a technician. So, you know, we produce almost all of our own crowns, almost all of our own dentures and, you know, RPD type cases and implant stuff within our office. And uh, I have to have a production 3D printer where it's a modest cost. So anywhere between, you know, three to $4,000 upwards of about 10 to 12,000. Once you get above that price range, it becomes a, a significant barrier. Uh, so there's a lot of talk out there about some of the other printers coming out, some really nice ones uh, at right around the kind of 17 to 20 to 25 range as well. Uh, but that's a little bit more of a price point than maybe the kind of everyday clinician would like to spend as well. Just because it's like, all right, I don't mind spending that, but can I get away with a five to $10,000 printer? Or do I have to go $20,000 printer? They both work, folks. Uh, they have super high usability. You just plug it in. All the dental materials are there. Sprint Ray Pro, they've got all this stuff figured out. You can print key splint. You can print models. I mean, you name it, surgical guides, it's all in there. And it works and it's pretty reliable. Moderate flexibility, meaning, yeah, you won't be able to go ahead and do crowns with it or zirconia, okay? Where you look at something like a production milling, the production milling is going to be a little bit more robust where you can go ahead and take, you know, something like this where you can produce models. Now, you could make a model with a milling machine. I don't know why anybody would want to, but, you know, you'd be able to model uh, surgical guides. Uh, again, I don't know why you'd want to, but occlusal guards, uh, crowns, polymers, metals. I mean, you could do anything with a 3D or uh, a milling machine. Uh, but they tend to have the highest costs. So a big part of what I've done in my practice, especially as we start shifting a little bit, thinking about digital restorative dentistry is, is, is kind of looking at 3D printing versus milling. And a big part of my practice for being able to do digital restorative dentistry is milling. And, you know, you look at something like my progression in my practice, I started out with a VHF K5, which is a dry mill. It's a workhorse. This thing, I mean, I couldn't break this thing. Uh, it was super reliable. It milled everything that could be milled dry. And it's very precise. However, I had to clean it a lot and I had to unscrew the thing. And it took so much time. And I started getting to the point where I'm like producing X number of crowns per week, et cetera. Uh, and so I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to buy a, a mill that I could just put 10 discs in there, program at 5 p.m. that night, come back in in the morning and they're all done. And I do that pretty regularly, usually three to four nights a week, uh, I'm milling something overnight. And whether it be dentures, whether it be um, crowns, you know, zirconia, whatever it may be. And the neat part about this is, this is that it is quite a bit more expensive, but I got to the point in my practice where I said, I've got the stuff and the revenue and the the volume to be able to justify this. I didn't start out with the most expensive equipment. I started out being like many of you, which is saying, well, let me start kind of light on the financial side. And then I'll upgrade to that point. <laughs> you know, it's all hindsight's always 2020. 20. If I could tell you a piece of advice, if I could have gone back to me, you know, four years ago or whatever it may be when I bought the K5, I would have just said, Mike, just get the, get the R5, <laughs> you know, you're going to need it. Okay. But then again, it's double the cost. So I wasn't ready mentally for that, you know, before. So many of you might be sitting back and say, well, I'd love a K5 or a Roland 52, you know, maybe something right around that $30,000 price point. Yeah, you absolutely can get in right around that kind of 30 to 35 range, you know, versus like a VHF R5 or an IMS Core uh, 350, something like that. It might run you upwards of, you know, 50 to $70,000. You know, and that's a big nut, especially when you're talking that's only just the milling machine. So, you know, you could start smart just by one of the machines and then by another independent machine and just kind of start slowly going towards that as your volume starts increasing. And how you really increase volume. I found that across the board in my entire laboratory combined clinical laboratory practice with myself and my technician, uh, the number one way that I can go ahead and increase production in my office, because I got one of me and I am the CAD designer, the dentist and everything. And then my technician takes over after that. Uh, the number one way I can increase my production is by outsourcing designs. And many of you that might just say, I love this stuff where I can go ahead and scan and I've got this 3D printer. It's pretty easy to figure out, but the vast majority of clinicians will say the design is the part that really holds me up. Lab Pronto. So Blue Sky Bio has got this incredible uh, outsourcing service where just for a couple of bucks, you click a button, upload the case, and it's just they do it for you. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty amazing. You know, you get an STL file that's delivered to you and it's ready to go. 
And then what happens is, this is that when you're thinking about digital restorative dentistry, whether it's dentures, crowns, or whatever it may be, make sure you start smart, okay? Find creative technologies, find creative implementation protocols, and then also know how to balance out the need of doing the design yourself versus outsourcing. Heck, you can even outsource the production of the crown. You take the design file, send it to a group like Alien or another group, um, you know, that will, can produce the crown for you. I tried out, you know, another service the other day, uh, it's called like Easy Gold Crowns or whatever. And um, I, I sent them a couple of STL files that I designed, gold crowns, and they milled the gold crowns completely digital. And I've never seen gold crowns fit like that in my entire life. I mean, they just dropped in, the contacts were perfect. And all I had to do was really put, I had to polish off the, um, the, the sprues. Uh, I'd use brownies and greenies only for the sprues. And then the only thing that had to be done in the actual crown is my technician took a little bit of rouge, brrr, polished and done. I mean, the power of digital dentistry, even for metal restorations is superb. But pick and choose everybody, especially when you're getting started with digital restorative dentistry. It is so critical to understand that there's, I'm a firm believer in there's one miracle at a time. What do I mean by that? Well, that means it generally, whether it's clinical or it's something else, the first time that you do digital dentistry, it's, you know, be cautious about doing everything and jumping into the deep end of the swimming pool. So I didn't get started, everybody doing everything. I got started saying, I got an optical scanner. I wonder if I could just figure out how to de design something with this mesh. You know, I used like 10 different softwares at the time. Nobody knew what mesh mixer was at the time. And like, I had to teach this to myself and I was figuring out how to do this stuff with mesh mixer, building models and booleans and figuring out crowns. And I said, all right, my miracle today <laughs> is taking the optical scan and doing a digital design with it. And I outsourced the 3d print. Once I get a few reps behind me of doing that, then I bought the 3D printer and said, hmm, there might be something to this. And this was like back in 2011, 2012, I mean, super early on. And what happens is, is just that, yeah, it was, that was my first miracle. And then the second miracle is like, okay, I got the design down. Now let me see if I take this and outsource this to a milling machine company that does this every single day. And then I figured out, yeah, that worked. Then I was ready to go ahead and say, yep, that tooth drop date dropped in. If I sent it out to the milling center, somebody who's a professional at doing this all day, every day, just like initially I started out 3D printing at a really large industrial center, like a, like a core 3D or an Intech, you know, one of these big centers. And then I said, it fits. Hmm. My next miracle is going to be, I'll buy a printer, see if it'll fit work in my office. And it works. And you think, okay, if it at least works nine times out of 10, it's not going to work 10 times out of 10 every time. <laughs> the stuff that you see on Facebook is sometimes kind of like the cases that work. So you got to be cautious with that. Cause I know a lot of times on social media, it's like, oh, they're doing this all day, every day. Yeah, we're doing this all day, every day. But the reality is, this is that you got to kind of roll around in the dirt a little bit and know that it's going to not work sometimes. That's okay because nothing really works hundred percent of the time. We as clinicians are trained this in dental school that we try to figure out systems of how it works. Begin with your optical scan, start with intraoral scanner or desktop scanner, design the case, you know, outsource the design, outsource the milling. There you go. That's the first place to start Then You got your, you know, intraoral scan, open up blue sky bio, design your crown, outsource the 3d print. Try that first. But if you're a gambler, you say, oh, you know what? I just want to try it out in my office, you know, just buy a cheap printer and see if it works. And then once you prove it to yourself with a two, $300 printer, it reasonably fits. It's not going to be excellent. It's going to reasonably fit. And then you're like, all right, maybe I'll drop the 10,000 bucks or the 5,000 bucks or the $8,000 on a 3D printer or a milling machine, et cetera. So let's kind of talk a little bit and segue about some example cases of how I approach this in my practice. You know, this will be a pretty straightforward, simple case. So this patient came to my practice, you know, not that long ago. And, um, you know, she's been an established patient to the practice for years and years. And she says, doc, you know, something's funny right there. So we took a PA x-ray 
And you could tell she's got full dentition, you know, it's a completely dentate patient. And she comes in and, and she's just like, you know, doc, uh, I've got this tooth, it, the gums are funny, you know, what can you do? And uh, long story short, took an x-ray, took a PA, and I can see here that, you know, tooth number 23 is, you know, about ready to say, I see ya. You know, you've got some internal external resorption and, you know, you got to act quick on these cases because there's a chance, you know, that it could take out some of the bone. It could take out some of the tooth next door. You just never know. I mean, the resorption can continue on the tooth even next door. Like that 24 is even like, oh, man, we would have to do something a little bit more here. But she had trauma. So she had, you know, a little facial trauma, took a, you know, uh, something, a, a car accident or something to the chin. So she has endo, post and cores on all those mandibular incisors. So, you know, we came up with the conversation, oh, you know, we might need to do something like a dental implant here. And this patient's bite and her occlusion was very specific, you know, a very particular patient. And when it came down to the certain shape of the teeth and how her bite was. And we kind of manage her the best we can, but you know, part of the challenges sometimes too, about being at a prosthodontics office is you get a lot of patients that are just kind of like on the woo, you know, side of things. So, you know, I'm this is a patient who's very dentally aware, extremely aware of her occlusion. And so what I did was, is I took out my intraoral scanner and I scanned the patient before we did anything. A big part, and you'll see this when I show you some of the blue sky bio design, a big part of what I do is utilizing intraoral scanning creatively to know the shape of the teeth at the, that the patient's comfortable with. What are the mitigating factors of saying, okay, I'm going to take this tooth. And I'm going to make it better. You know, a lot of times the patient's bite is just about right. It's like, doc, you know, it might not be perfect, but if you try to change something super small on a patient, that's very psychologically aware, it's a problem. So this patient went off to the periodontist, uh, this particular case I did not do. So this patient went off to the periodontist and, um, you know, had an implant placed. So it's a very nice looking dental implant comes back to me and it's now time to go ahead and start restoring this case. So what I ended up doing was, this is I ended up going ahead and just intraoral scanning her upper, lower with the healing abutment removed. And I said to myself, hmm, you know, I could do this case fully digital, you know, I can go ahead and, you know, put a scan body in and, and, and design it fully digitally. Uh, but this particular patient, it was just very, very particular and picky. So I said, you know what? let me go ahead and just step back a little bit. I don't want to do the final crown right away. I want to put this patient into a temporary just for a period of time. So that way we can have her occlusion really stabilize herself. So you can see across the board, maybe the occlusion is not that big of a deal, but when managing some difficult psychologically derived patients, you kind of have to step back and say, all right, this is our prototype. Let's take it from there. And so what I did was, is I actually went ahead and just made a straight up PBS impression. You know, you don't have to go ahead and do everything digital, everybody, you know, putting on scan bodies is one miracle. There are some times in some cases where the scan body just doesn't work that great. And, you know, there's not nothing wrong with just doing some things digital and some things analog and combining analog and digital. So in this particular case, I made a PBS impression and then took just a stock uh, temporary abutment. And, you know, instead of having all these scan body libraries and I need to have this plug in and then does it work with Blue Sky Bio and can I make everything work? Yeah, you can do that if you spend your time. But to tell you the truth, sometimes you just take a stone model, you put on a temp abutment on the stone model, you prep it a little bit, and then I take my intraoral scanner and I just scan it. And now it's a very simple crown design. It's no longer an implant fancy. You got to do all these steps and worry about tolerances and your milling uh, of your screw channels and all of that. It just becomes very predictable tooth dentistry. Okay. It's no longer an implant dentistry case because you got a margin on your temp abutment. So I take my uh, Medit scanner. This is the Medit i700 scanner. And we go ahead and we just we zoom in a little bit and just kind of make sure that everything here looks good. And I scan the actual temp cylinder, all right? And I know it sounds like, oh man, this is ridiculous. Why are you doing this here? This is so many extra steps. Well, sometimes you have to do extra steps for ultimate predictability. What do I mean by that? Well, every time that you take a scan body and you pop it into an implant, you scan it, there's always a chance there's gonna be some error. Maybe the scan body is not down all the way, number one. Okay. Number two, do you have the updated libraries in your software? 
not that big of a deal in the Blue Sky Bio software, but in software like ExoCAD and 3Shape, you got to make sure you have your updated libraries because things change. And then ultimately, you have to worry about fit and tolerances and you know doing all this stuff. You have a very picky patient. I'll make a quick PVS impression, take a temp cylinder on there, and now let's just go ahead and, and start designing a crown for this case. So I literally go into the crown and bridge module, of Blue Sky Bio, conventional crown, select the three models, and then I import it directly into the software. Then I just follow the prompts. I'll go ahead and first begin by choosing the occlusal plane. So I'll designate the occlusal plane of the maxillary arch. Make sure that it's in line with the grid in the Blue Sky Bio software. Midline, everything's lined up. And keep in mind, everybody, what you're looking at is, is I'm taking now the original scan from before I extracted the tooth. You see the tooth on there? It's still on there. And I'm going to align the PBS impression of the implant. It was an open tray technique, PVS impression, nothing fancy. I scan that in on my I-700 and align it to what we call the pre-prep model. That patient was pretty comfortable with the shape and design of that lower incisor, that number 23. Literally, I don't even need to do the scan of the patient's you know, soft tissue that I showed you before with the trio scanner. You don't need to do that. It could just scan the original make a PVS impression. And I don't even need to intraoral scan the patient that second visit, but I do it anyways, just to have it on record. Then I take um, Christian's library, drop it right into here and then take that tooth. I'm still in the surgical guide design portion of the, of the, of the system. So blue sky bio kind of works the best right now. Uh, when I just start in the surgical guide design uh, library, import the models, align the models using fiduciary markers, those little points, and then I drop in a virtual tooth using the surgical guide uh, module. Then there's a giant button up there that says continue to crowns. No problem. I choose the model is going to be my temp model with the cylinder scanned in. I choose the tooth that I want to design the crown on and then the opposing. I just click next. Then in the panels, I can go ahead and turn off the tooth. And now you could see how clean of a crown design is. I literally just mark the margins just like a crown. And you say to me, this is ridiculous. Use a scan body. Sure, do that as your next case. But while you're testing yourself, begin with one miracle at a time. So I'm literally taking a temp cylinder. You can do this with a tie base too, everybody. Just put a tie base on there and scan it. It'll work the same. And you would be amazed how many laboratories that do that. <laughs> so then I'll set my path of insertion, which is amazing. Uh, having dynamic path of insertion with the newer Blue Sky Bio software is huge. So I can define the interproximal or the aproximal area, which is basically going to tell the software where to do a cut. So I define that and then it automatically kind of starts building what's called a minimum thickness. So anytime that you do now production of a tooth, a crown, a milling machine, whatever it may be, you have to define minimal thickness of what you would consider the safe and tolerant zone. You know, since I'm going to be, you know, making a pretty narrow tooth here, I can kind of cheat a little bit. My milling machine, I can go down to about 10 microns in thickness. So I multiply that by three and say, all right, 30 microns I feel comfortable with. If you're unsure, just leave the Blue Sky Bio defaults alone. Keep it simple. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use that tooth design and the shape of the patient's original tooth and just match it. So I'm going to go ahead and just use the shape of the original tooth and just use my deformation tools in the Blue Sky Plan software. And I'm just going to go ahead and start waxing up the tooth on the stone model, but using the patient's pre-preparation model as a guide. Does it need to be exact? No. You can even see here that my alignment, maybe I could have refined it a little bit. If this alignment's not perfect, there's a little green and blue overlay. Sure. The alignment error is only like maybe... 20 microns, 30 microns, who cares? All I'm doing is, is using the general facial and lingual shape of the pre-preparation mode to guide my tooth dentistry. And you'll see it come in a little bit better in my next example, but this is a straightforward, simple case, single implant tooth. And you say to me, but Mike, now I've got this, you know, single incisor design. Isn't it supposed to be like screw retained? Isn't that what you're supposed to do for everything? Yeah, with the scan body workflow, I can design the screw channel, but I could do that also just using the mental software. Blue Sky Bio's got an incredible crown, what's called Boolean function. 
So I can literally go ahead and add a model, go back to the surgical guide design, and I'll bring in just this little cylinder. This is a little cylinder I designed in Mesh Mixer. It's like two, 2.5 millimeters in diameter, like 15 to 20 millimeters long. Really easy to do in Mesh Mixer. Grab that cylinder and I just bring it into the position of approximately where the screw channel is for this restoration. When I take that, I just literally place it guessing where I think the screw channel is going to go. And I angle it, move it around, you know, and I could take that, put it into position, turn it on, turn it off, line it up to my little cylinder. Ah, it's not perfect, but this will do for a temp or even a final crown. Who cares? So now I've got the cylinder. I now go to the Boolean operation page in my restoration design panel, choose difference, choose the design, which is the D, which is the completed crown, choose that little screw channel cylinder, and I hit the apply button. And then boop, it's gone. So I literally do a cookie cutter stamp out of the crown. And then it makes it very, very simple for me to go ahead and design a hole. Sure, you could go ahead and just 3D print or mill this crown without the hole and then just take a burr and just go brrr. That's the easiest way to do it, everybody, but it's not as predictable or as clean. If I can use the Blue Sky Bio software and just do a little, a little cookie cutter cut in that, that's awesome. Then I can just literally take the crown, put it on the tie base like you saw or on the temp cylinder straight out of the 3D printer, extremely predictable. So the Boolean procedures that exist within the Blue Sky Bio software these days is remarkable. And this is a very straightforward, simple case. But once you understand the basics of Boolean procedures, you line up an entire all on X case. You line up a three unit bridge on implants. If you understand Booleans, you can make an all on X interim bridge in Blue Sky Bio for basically free. All right, to do that in ExoCAD software or three shape, is a lot of money. <laughs> you might need the removables module plus, you know, the model building function. All of that's built into Blue Sky Bio software for essentially free. All right. Now that's a pretty amazing thing to tell you the truth. And it really speaks volumes of what Blue Sky Bio is, is really committed to on the digital side. Now, this is a picture I showed on Facebook not too long ago. Some of you might have seen it because uh, I was like, ah, you know, I got this disc and I wanted to see if my milling machine could go ahead and mill this ridiculously small tooth. So, I mean, I could probably even fit it like right in here if you see my mouse. So this little spot right in there, I could probably fit that lateral incisor. I don't know, man, I'm cheap, you know, like a lot of dentists do. It's like, I've got a, a disc of a milling machine. I'll go ahead and use that here. Uh, so my cost here was essentially to mill this, not including the milling machine. I get all that, but. I mean, my total cost of doing this interim crown, including the tie base, uh, I mean, the tie base cost, uh, I had to buy that one. There's maybe 40 bucks, 50 bucks for the tie base. Uh, the material cost here is about $2. So you're talking about, you know, 50, 60 bucks for this temporary. You know, you charge 100, 150, 200 bucks for an interim restoration for an implant, 600 bucks, whatever your, your patients are willing to pay. Uh, yeah, but forget about the money. I mean, you can definitely go ahead and do well uh, from a financial point of view, this in your practice. But this is all about leveraging what you can do from a digital point of view and to really get your patients to be like, wow, that's pretty amazing. So in this video, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just now take that little uh, titanium temporary cylinder tie base, and I'll just protect the screw. So I take the screw and I pop it onto an analog, take a little bit of cotton, stick it in there, just kind of plug that down. And I'll put on some bonding agent. So in this particular case, I'll use a little bit of bonding agent, put it into a little dappen dish that I get from Shine or this one I got from Pearson Dental. So then I take out uh, the, the bonding agent, put it on the inside of the crown. And the, the milling machine's neat because I literally pop it out of the disc and it's ready to do this. If it was a 3D printer, I'd have to go ahead and wash it and clean it and then UV cure it. Uh, so at this point now, what I can go ahead and do, place the bonding agent, a little bit of air dry, UV cure, depending upon the bonding agent. In this particular case, I put a little bit of the bonding agent also on the, on the tie base. And then I'll go ahead and just start allowing this just to be cemented now. So a little bit of air, a little bit of UV cure. Yeah, you don't hear the air in the background. There you go, I show it there in that picture. And I'll take a UV cure and just do a little bit of a light cure to both that and to the tie base as well. 
Now at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take out some of my cement. In this particular example, I used uh, the Sem EZ from Zest Dental Solutions, which is really good for, uh, for implant crowns. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that Sem EZ, place it onto the temporary cylinder. And then I'll take a little bit and put it on the crown. And notice here, I'm doing this not on the model, outside of the mouth, you know, using the, the reliability that you have, you know, for uh, crown and bridge dentistry, uh, it really makes for a pretty straightforward procedure where you just cement it outside of the mouth. And folks, if any questions come up, uh, you're welcome to go ahead and put your question, write it up in the question and answer session. So especially if we have any doctors that are raising their hands, just make sure you go ahead and put your, write your question in the, in the question and answer box, please. So I'm cementing this outside of the mouth. And then the key is that little cotton, when it comes out, I just grab it, pulls it out, and then it pulls all the cement out there with it. So that way I don't have to worry about cement getting into the screw channel. Now, just as a precaution here, I'm gonna unscrew this now, just as an example. I don't have to in this case, but I'll show this as an example. I'll take that, put it onto the stone model just to make sure that it's gonna go ahead and um, you know uh, we've gone from there. Tighten it down. And Amr uh, or Amar, uh, you've got a question. Can I just scan with a scan body and register the bite too? Absolutely, I addressed that earlier. You can absolutely do this with a scan body. I'm showing this as an example because there, when you go scan body, there's a couple little steps along the way where you could inject potential error. I'm showing this for the doctors to go ahead and do your first case, all right? You do your simple case, one miracle at a time. Don't rely solely on the scan body. Just make a quick PVS impression, do it, Design on Blue Sky Bio, check it on the model. So that way, when you know you go to the patient, you're comfortable with it. Once you do one of these cases, then do everything with a scan body after that. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm a huge scan body guy. I use scan bodies on all my cases. So now I'll remove the healing abutment, go ahead then and place my interim restoration. Drops right in. Patient's like, wow, that's amazing. And then I'll bring this patient back in uh, 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 maybe a month later, let the tissue sculpt around there because I want to get those tissues to fold into the interproximal space. Uh, so that way it makes it extremely predictable. So let's go ahead now into the slightly more complex, and then we'll have a little bit more time for some dedicated time for question and answers as well. So a little bit more complex, maybe we not do implant dentistry. We just do tooth dentistry at this point. So this patient came to my practice again, not that long ago, maybe a month and a half ago, something like that. Uh, came in and said, Doc, something's not right here. And he's wiggling and he's wiggling his uh, four unit FPD bridge. I took an x ray. You can see it here clearly on the x ray that, okay, we've got something that's fractured off on that tooth number six. So it's a bridge from tooth number three to number six. Maybe I'll do an implant there. Maybe I won't. You know, in my practice, not everything I do is implant dentistry. Not everything I do is implant overdentures. I kind of wish it were that way because I love implant overdentures probably more than anything else. Uh, but what happens is, is, is that I do have a lot of patients with standard tooth dentistry that are not ready to move on to implants just yet. So in this particular case, I had a patient with an existing FPD. Before I go do anything to this patient, because we've got lots of directions of where we can go. Look at this x-ray again. We can go ahead and section, keep the crown on number three, do take that tooth out, then number six, do two implants and an implant bridge. Done. That's one option. Okay. Ten, fifteen thousand dollars, whatever that may be. The patient's like, oh, that's a lot of money. The patient says, Doc, I, I had this bridge for like 40 years. Can't I like just get a new bridge? Yeah, we can do that. To do that, we'd have to go ahead and do root canals, maybe a post and core. Yeah, the doctor, that's what I want. I don't want this implant stuff. The backstory here is this is actually a pretty holistic minded patient uh, that doesn't like the idea of the metal existing in his mouth. So he says, I would like to not have titanium if I could avoid it. He's like, I'm not crazy doc. If you need to put titanium in, do it. But if I could avoid it, I would prefer. No problem. So in this particular case, I scanned his bridge ahead of time. All right. Then it goes off to the endodontist because Lord knows last thing I want to do is endo, but more power to you if you like it. Uh, so it goes off to the, the root canal doctor, does endo on there, and then we do a cast post and core. Not shown in this video because I don't have time for it, but I actually digitally designed the cast post and core myself. Uh, and then that's actually milled gold. So milled gold for the cast post and core. Uh, I've got a couple of techniques. If you go to www.learndentistry.com, I, I have a couple articles on there talking about some of my techniques of how I do digital cast post and cores or milled, cast, or milled post and core or whatever. So I prepped it. So I've got tooth number three and number six. So long span FPD from three to six. And then how do I approach this? So I scanned in the prep 
that you just saw right there with my intraoral scanner. Grab the three scans. And this video is a little bit quicker just because I meant it as a, as a little quicker demonstration, but similar workflows. Blue Sky Bio software, align the arches. I'm going to bring in the patient's original scan before I disassembled the bridge, before he had an endo procedure and all and the whatever. So patient was very comfortable with his occlusion with that bridge design right there. That's the original bridge. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring in Dr. Brennan's teeth, Christian's teeth. I'll bring in uh, three to number six and I'll leave it as medium, bring them all in. And now I'll just go ahead and align those teeth in the Blue Sky Bio software to where the pre-preparation teeth are. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I don't want to have to adjust this zirconia bridge when I deliver. I want the patient to drop it in. The patient goes, wow, doctor, it's perfect. Okay. That's my goal. Zero adjustment deliveries, maybe interproximals a little bit, but that's it. I don't want to have to adjust the occlusion. If I have to, maybe a spotted in here and there, but anytime that you grind on the occlusion for uh, 10 minutes, the patient's like, doc, what are you doing? So I'm going to sketch and outline my final impression, design the margins in the surgical guide software. I'm designing the, the bridge. Then I'm going to join the margins together with that design crown. And it seamlessly just joins together. Now I'm going to uh, design the crowns based upon the pre-preparation mode in both the abutment teeth as well as the pontic teeth. Mark the margins, join those two together so you complete individual crown designs on those two. And then I wax up the pontics and I can even use a Boolean procedure that I showed you earlier to go ahead and smooth this out. That's ridiculous. Smooth it out, smooth out that, that second, first premolar. Now I'm going to do a Boolean procedure. So that way it stamps it. So that way the, the crown just basically fits on the tissues. Okay. The pontic doesn't, you can have it as a disc. I mean, I could even go into Blue Sky Bio and make an ovate pontic in there and then have it Boolean. So that way the crown restoration literally is into that space. Now in the software, I join the bridge together, set a singular path of insertion. And now we've got our you know, bridge design that we can go ahead and in this case, use it as my interim, okay? So I wanted to test out the patient's occlusion. I wanted this in place so that way we can go ahead and give this patient an interim restoration. I don't know about you all, but I've had this kind of easy peasy last 14 months from one perspective. It's been a tough year, don't get me wrong. But there's a lot of patients just going, doc, I'm wearing a mask. I don't really care if I'm missing teeth there. <laughs> They're like, I'm just wearing the mask all the time. So it's like a lot less pressure to have the patient have a temp temporary that day. So in this particular case, I had the patient come back later in the day to get a 3D printed temporary. So I went ahead and I designed it in Blue Sky Bio software, uh, 3D printed it uh, in this particular case on my next end printer, just because that, that bridge prints in about 15 to 18 minutes. Uh, this was with next end crown and bridge material. Then I can go ahead and take that. Uh, patient comes back later that day. He's been gumming it for <laughs> the whole day. And then I literally have all of this ready, seat the provisional restoration. And now it's allowing me to go ahead and just kind of test everything. Now notice here, everybody, that the cases that I'm showing you is maybe not necessarily my definitive restorations, but my interim restorations, my 3D printed or milled restorations. One miracle at a time. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is maybe not necessarily do all my permanent crowns, you know, with the first time I use Blue Sky Bio software. I'm going to go ahead and say to myself, uh, you know, I've got temporaries. Uh, let me go ahead and design the temporary with the restoration in Blue Sky Bio. And then maybe if I need to, I can go ahead and mesh it up a little bit. You know, I can modify it. What's not shown in my video was it actually kind of built out some stronger connectors. I used the smoothing function of the finished restoration. I just made huge connectors. Uh, so that way the patient has minimal chance of fracturing this while wearing the provisional restoration. Once you prove it to yourself that this works, then go to your final restoration. But the key is, is, is that, you know, anytime that you're getting started with this technology, make sure you reach out to folks, you know, that kind of have, you know, done it a little bit more, or maybe it could be a guidance or a mentor for you as well. Uh, just as a little plug to you all as well, uh, if you're interested, uh, we run a comprehensive online course called www.learndental3d.com uh, on, our, on our group. Uh, if you uh, use the, the coupon code BSBWebinar2021, it takes 50 bucks off the course. Anybody that would like to go ahead and enroll in that course, make sure you check it out. I cover lots of Blue Sky Bio goodies on there and lots of printers. 
not just one. Uh, also, we have a section on there on using ExoCAD and 3Shape and milling. So staining glaze, if you want to learn how to staining glaze your zirconia restoration, it's all here on this online course. 46 hours of CEUs. That being said, I thank everybody for tuning in here today. Uh, make sure you connect with us at Learn Dentistry and then also on our website, www.learndentistry.com. Uh, so Michael, it looks like we might have a couple of minutes here for some questions. Okay, so I'd like to encourage everybody to take this opportunity to pick uh, Dr. Scherer's brain. It's full of valuable information. Uh, meanwhile, I'll just repeat a few things I started the, the webinar presentation with. And if you have any, um, oh, the, sorry, that will be sending the CE credit within around one week via email. So you could check your inboxes there. We also have the past recordings from previous presentations and the schedule for upcoming presentations on our website, blueskyplan.com forward slash webinars 2021. Okay. Um, so there are a few questions coming in. Do you see them on your screen? I do. I'll take the first one uh, here. Um, so we've got uh, Michael Smith. Uh, can you use Blue Sky Plan for flippers in the denture module? Absolutely. Um, so I didn't show, I didn't have a lot of time to go ahead and talk about removables. Um, kind of the charge to me for this particular presentation was to talk a little bit more about crowns and bridges, uh, but removable, especially interim restorations and digital dentures, you know, Blue Sky Bio is really good for digital dentures uh, and it's gotten better and better and better every single time. So you see the ability now to be able to go ahead and have realistic gingiva and very nice approaches of using interim restorations and then also complete dentures. Um, so absolutely. And you can use it for occlusal guards too. It just takes a couple of workarounds as well. Uh, but that being said, you know, there's lots of opportunity and I'm a firm believer that the Blue Sky Bio software is probably the most powerful software um, for all of dentistry when you truly understand it. Um, you know, as of right now, it's just, you know, when it comes to it, it takes a little bit of creative thought, but once you go ahead and do it, uh, you really got it down. Uh, we've got another question. Have I scanned uh, for all on four and all on six? Great question. Uh, so absolutely. I've done both the uh, intraoral scanning as well as phot photogrammy uh, for all on four, all on X. And the reality is, is, is that you can absolutely do it. And 90% of the time it's going to work. Now, maybe even 95% of the time, intraoral scanning for all on four, uh, and then certainly the other five, 10% of the time, you know, photogrammy like PIC and iMetric absolutely are very predictable workflows. Just pure intraoral scanning, I'm a firm believer that that is going to be the standard. I don't necessarily know if we're going to need, you know, photogrammy units in the future. Um, certainly it's a good use right now. Uh, but once we go ahead and get intraoral scanning really, really to the point where it's super reliable and arguably it's there right now. Um, I've done a lot of all on four restorations, pure digital um, using intraoral scanning, but it's not super predictable. Um, so when you're thinking about utilizing restorative dentistry for all on four, uh, we're still in kind of that zone right now where you can use intraoral scanning for things like interim restorations. So a big thing of what I do for all on X, and I cover this pretty extensively in my uh, www.learnallonx.com course, um, the intraoral scanning side works best when you're scanning like the interim prosthesis, the immediate load prosthesis the patient's been wearing. And then combining that either with photogrammy or even just pulling out a PBS impression. So you can, if you don't want to spend the 20 to $30,000 for, you know, a photogrammy unit, which is justified, that's a lot of money. I mean, pulling out a little bit of PBS for a couple of cases of all in X that you do here and there, a very smart decision. So what I do is, is, is that my typical workflow is intraoral scanning the interim prosthesis, upper, lower, bite pulling the prosthesis out, scanning the soft tissues, scanning the scan bodies, merging it all together. But then I'd make also a splinted impression post PBS impression or photogrammy. Um, but most of the time I just pull out PBS because it's really predictable, really straightforward, splinted impression post, make a PBS impression, and then pour that up in the stone model. And then I take that stone model and I scan it in on my intraoral scanner, either the Trios Medit, uh, the Shining 3D scanner, or whatever you might use. And now you've got the model to double check your work. Once you've proven that to yourself multiple times, then it's time to invest in the photogrammy unit. Just be careful because so many dentists I know 
buy all this stuff and it just sits in the corner and you might use it on one case or two cases and then it just sits. So intelligent, you know, smart decisions when getting into digital dentistry is really recommended unless you do these cases routinely. Um, so yeah, I mean, that absolutely works and I do it every single day, but keep in mind also 3D printing is perfectly designed for prototyping. And let's think about how 3D printing really got started. It was first called rapid prototyping. So it was for engineering models to print something really quick before you invest in uh, injection molding or milling. Uh, and so 3D printing is really good for prototyping teeth as well. And you can absolutely do that with an intraoral scanner and Blue Sky Bio software. And you've seen, especially like Corey's got some great videos. Um, and also Rick has shown some incredible work too of using Blue Sky Bio software with interim all on X restorations where you basically design a denture and you've got a base and then you just put Boolean cylinders into where your, your implants are. And so you can seamlessly merge your surgical guide design uh, with your interim restoration. Uh, we've got another question here also from Michael, digital wax ups denture module. Absolutely. Where Blue Sky Bio software also is pretty darn cool is this is utilizing the very simple add teeth, moving them around, uh, literally what's called like, you know, anatomic pontics is literally just like mesh mixer, just dropping in a library of teeth um, and then just putting them into what you think is an ideal position and then building a denture uh, utilizing that. And that's kind of one thing I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I use denture modules in both uh, Blue Sky Bio, uh, 3Shape, and ExoCAD software to be able to go ahead and then turn that into an all on X interim restoration. Uh, so the denture module is one of the best, uh, you know, workarounds for what you can do. And if, you know, especially when you're looking at like, you know, utilizing software like ExoCAD and Blue Sky Bio together, you know, the big secret is everybody, you know, digital dentistry, there's kind of a fair number of docs like myself that just kind of have all of the softwares because, you know, you know, you three shape does some pretty amazing stuff in their software, but it also, when you look at a couple of things, you're like, oh man, I wish that was a little bit easier to do. It still works great, but you have to do a lot of steps just to do a very simple task where if you did that in blue sky bio, and then maybe jumped it over to three shape or did something in three shape, jumped it over to blue sky bio. Uh, you can do some really amazing creative things when just thinking outside the box a little bit. So, uh, we got one more question here. Um, I think I already covered this. What's my workflow for the all on four restorations? So I did cover that. So thank you for asking that question. All right, Michael, I think that is it. Unless there's anything else uh, that you can think of. Oh, I think that uh, wraps things up and covers today's presentation. Thank you very much for taking the time. As always, willingness to teach and to educate and contribute. It's, it's very much appreciated. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate Blue Sky Bio. And thank you, for everybody, for tuning in. It's really an honor and privilege to be able to do this presentation today. Thank you, everybody, and enjoy the rest of your weekend.